Hello everyone, this is a tutorial on a smooth room based camera for pixel art in Godot. Um, so I'm going to start off by showing you what exactly we're making. So, let's just play the game. And we have our player. Two different rooms. And the rooms can be smaller than the screen size. Or they can be bigger. Yes. And you'll see that our camera is smoothed, um, but not only between rooms, but also in our bigger rooms that uh, the camera follows the player. All right. So, um, the way this works is that we have a multiple rooms. We have these rooms that are defined by uh, area two Ds and the collision shapes. Now, this idea. Be showing you another example. So this idea was originally um, presented to me by Ferrazano. Um, I was looking at how to do this myself because I didn't really know, and he came up with the area two D, um, and to use those to check uh, which room the player is in. And how he does that is uh, he in his player scene he has a room detector, which uh, just represents the player. And so what this will do is that whenever the player enters a room, uh, it will activate the signal and this um, activates this function that will change the camera limits um, according to the current room it's in. And that works quite well actually. I'll show you what we're See we're in a bigger room. And now we're in this room. Now we're in a smaller room. There we go. Um, but you'll notice that when we're in the bigger room, it's not really smoothed. And between rooms, we're not, uh, the transition isn't really smooth. It's just pretty instant. Right? So, what, um, what you'll see is that if you try to use camera smoothing um, by just checking it over here, um, smoothing enabled and limit smoothed, you'll start to see some problems. And yeah, you'll see the jitteriness, and that that's not what you want. <laughs> like, you don't want that in your game. Now, the tr transition between uh, rooms is okay. It's not perfect, but it's okay. But yeah, the jitteriness is unacceptable, in my opinion. So, and um, what originally inspired me to do this was I wanted my, uh, the transition to some, be something similar to uh, Celeste. You'll notice that uh, whenever the player goes to different rooms, it kind of transitions between them. So yeah, I'm going to be showing you guys my project now. So, like I said before, I still use the uh, Area 2Ds. However, I have the camera outside the player's scene, and it's just um, in the it's just in the main scene or the testing scene. And in my player um. My player scene, I have the room detector, and this room detector is on layer 8, which is room, and all my area 2D rooms are also on layer 8. Okay, and this room detector, I have made the, the size of the collision shape 0, 0. That's because there, you'll, you'll, notice, you'll notice that there's sometimes as there are issues. Between uh, actually, I'll show you right here. So when I go into the middle, and I don't leave the other room. Oh, never mind. I think I fixed it. Yeah. So if you, you gotta make sure the shape is zero or very small at least, and this will fix one of the issues you'll see in his comments in the. Arizona's video. He had that. Um, okay. So I have this signal, and this signal is attached to the player. And the signal it does something pretty similar. Um, but what this does is it calls a global dot change room function, passing in the position of the room, the size of it. And so let's check out our global scripts. So this is it right here. And it has four variables, 
It has a room pause boolean, a room pause timer, uh, a player camera, and a platforming player. And the global scene is just this. It's a it's an auto load, so it's a singleton, and so it's a way for me to store references to the other nodes, so the player and camera uh, can access each other without a uh, too big of an issue. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but this is just how I do it. Um, and what this does now is it sets the player camera's current room center and current room size to what we're given up here. And then it also um, pauses. So, uh, what this pause does to the player, and all it does is that if room pause is true, that means we won't be moving. So it just pauses player movement. And you'll kind of notice that. It's kind of a slight pause. It's a similar thing in Celeste, though. That's why I have it in my game. I have it in this game, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the camera script. So this is where most of the things happen. Um, so I have uh, six variables here. And let's go to the camera node. So I have a follow smoothing. And this value is just the value between 0 and 1. And that determines um, how fast it smooths. And um, so I have this uh, value, smoothing. And this is what the game uses um, while it's while it's running. So you'll notice that um, I'm using smoothing equals one at the beginning, and then I'm switching to smoothing equals following after 0 0.1 seconds. Now, if I delete this, notice it does that, and that's exactly why I have set smoothing set to one. So it doesn't do that. Uh, next, I also have smoothing enabled to false, and that's pretty much everything I'm inside my ready function. Um, I have the view size here, um, and I also have zoom view size, which is what we actually use in our function. So the zoom view size is calculated every uh, frame um, inside the physics process function. Now, it's really important that our everything is inside the physics process function, or else it's just not going to work right. As you'll see, see that it's still it's like still jittering. That's because the player movement is in physics process, so this also has to be in physics process. As for the process mode, I haven't really noticed much of a difference between physics and idle. I just have it on physics, so do what you will with that. Um, now this camera, this works for almost anything. I think I mean I've only tested on a platformer, but I would assume it wouldn't really break for anything else. Um, but yeah. Um, next up, uh, now we're getting a target position. This target position is used to uh, calculate the position of the camera in that um, specific in that frame. And this is done by lerping current position of the, uh, of the position. No, sorry, this is done by lerping the current camera position to the target position by the smoothing amount. And that's why the smoothing needs to be between 0 and 1. So, the idea to lerp, or interpolate the camera, was actually from a video by Nessie. Um, that video is in the description. Um, it was on how to make a perfect uh, pixel art camera and still have it smoothed. And yeah, that's pretty much where I got the idea to lerp. Um, that's pretty much how we smooth the camera. Without this, it's not smooth at all. Um, Another important thing, important thing to note is that you want to have your limits to set to the maximum, or what they are by default. So yeah, just a hundred, like a million is fine, and you want to make sure smoothing is disabled. All of the script does disable it by, uh, by default whenever it starts. And lastly, we have our calculate target position. And you don't really know, you don't really need to know too much about how this works, but um, all it does is it uh, uses the room size and the view size, uh, the zoom view size, to calculate um, the best possible position for the camera to be in. Now, what's important is that if 
our uh, room is smaller than the current view size, or it's the same size, it's just going to set the camera position to that. Um, it's going to set the target position to the room sensor. Otherwise, it will um, try to follow the player as best it can, but it won't leave the um, the bounds of the room. So like, it won't go past the walls of the room. Um, basically, yeah. Because if I were to not have this. like that oh wait what is oh dot x and this is just for the x so you'll notice that go all the way here and that's not what we want so that's why I have this right here the clamp and that's is I'm pretty sure that's pretty much it. Um I'm gonna have links to all these scripts in the description. Um I don't have script uh link to the entire movement code, but I have a I just have this code snippet and entirety of this. And another thing to know actually no, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um these just get the references to the uh camera and player. I'm going to leave this entire script here, this entire script here, and this function. And make sure it's connected to the signal. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for watching the tutorial. Hope you guys learned something. Um, again, credits to Verrazano and Nessie. Um, they were kind of what got me to this solution. I kind of put them together, and this is what I got. Alright, see you guys.